Welcome to the Crying Comedy Party channel. I'm Amanda, and today I'm sharing the outrageous news that Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, said in a recent interview that Taiwan is a part of China, and that the reunification of Taiwan is a fundamental issue for China. He believes that for Beijing, Taiwan's relationship with China is the same as Hawaii's relationship with the United States. The interview has sparked a firestorm of controversy on X, the social media platform formerly known as Twitter, with experts and scholars criticizing Musk for promoting Beijing, ignoring the will and interests of the people of Taiwan, and being ignorant of both Chinese and US history. Asked by the host what he thought about China and US-China relations, Musk said he knows a lot about China because he has visited the country many times in recent years and has had many exchanges with senior Chinese leaders at many levels. He said that in the near future, China's military power in the Taiwan Strait will far exceed that of the United States, making it particularly difficult for the United States to protect Taiwan. If we take China's policy literally, and maybe we should, then China will integrate Taiwan into China by force, Mask said, that's what they're saying, that if there's no diplomatic solution, then there's going to be a forceful solution. Taiwan's foreign minister Wu Chao Sup responded on the social media platform X, accusing Musk of siding with authoritarian governments such as China and Russia. He said, I hope Mask will also ask the CCP to open X to the public. Perhaps he thinks it's good to block this platform, just as he shut down the Starlink service in order to sabotage Ukraine's counterattack against Russia. Look, Taiwan is not part of the People's Republic of China, and it can't be sold. This is not the first time Mask has publicly repeated Beijing's foreign policy, especially on Taiwan. In an interview with the Financial Times last year, he said that the Taiwan issue could be resolved by Beijing establishing Taiwan as a special administrative region. This argument highlights the selfishness and despicability of Musk, who advocates China's rationalization of invasion of Taiwan for the sake of Tesla's market in China and the concessions given to him by the Chinese Communist Party CCP, but who not only dares not push his Twitter acquisition into the Chinese market, but also does not dare to give up his US citizenship in exchange for the China citizenship that he worships, and who enjoys the freedom of speech in a democratic country while encouraging totalitarian dictatorships to invade. He enjoys freedom of speech in a democratic country while encouraging a totalitarian dictatorship to invade neighboring democracies. It's understandable that the owner of a major automaker would be so eager to avoid angering China's leaders with his words and actions, but it's a problem if the guy also owns Twitter, wrote Bloomberg columnist Matthew Iglesias. Musk has also previously declared that he wants to transform Twitter into a multifunctional platform like China's WeChat, where, in addition to basic social functions, users can access virtually all internet services, including payments, money management, posting and viewing articles and videos, and using WeChat to make purchases, buy tickets, and play games through a vast array of third-party apps. What's even more attractive to investors is that Musk wants to put cryptocurrencies into the excess payment functionality, but what Musk doesn't realize is that WeChat was built for the closed world of Chinese internet services and its only failure is outside the Great Firewall. Or rather, it's a failure within the walls of China. In addition to WeChat's speech control, China's totalitarian government also controls payments on WeChat. The Chinese government has been promoting mobile payments in recent years. Not to make people's lives easier, but in addition to being easier to monitor, mobile payments can alleviate China's problem of excessive counterfeit banknotes and help the Chinese government's implementation of the next step of the digital RMB. Even for an authoritarian country like China, there are still a lot of unsolvable security and regulatory problems in promoting the digital RMB. The transformation of Twitter from a social software to WeChat is not simply a technical problem of adding the PayPal function to Twitter. Even the overseas version of WeChat can't realize all the payment functions like the Chinese version of WeChat, and from the point of view of the greedy Musk, the technical problems can be solved by throwing money at them. And the security of financial regulation is more open in democratic countries than in totalitarian ones, and some state licenses have been applied for. As long as payments can be made, the valuation of Twitter X will soar. 
But the predictable result is that all sorts of loopholes for illegal money laundering and financial frauds will spread throughout the Twitter platform, and when serious incidents occur, the government has to intervene in order to regulate it. But the predictable result is that all sorts of loopholes for illegal money laundering and financial frauds will spread throughout the Twitter platform, and when serious incidents occur, the government has to intervene in order to regulate it. And when the governments of various countries intervene in order to regulate it, the privacy of personal data will no longer be safe. Privacy data will not be safe, there will also be speech control problems. For example, Alipay has asked foreign bookselling platforms to take down the books that the Chinese Communist Party does not like was refused, and then stopped allowing the platform to use Alipay's services. Even if Musk is acting as a megaphone for the CCP, it still can change the fate that the CCP will abandon Tesla. After Tesla opened its factory in China, China's EV industry has been developing rapidly under the CCP's strong subsidy. And the world's EV market share is now dominated by China's Biotti. There are serious safety issues, battery data falsification, battery spontaneous combustion, collision data falsification and so on. And the Chinese government has also banned Chinese Tesla owners to go through the official activities of the range, like Apple's cell phone by the government officials and state-owned enterprises to prohibit the use of the policy should not be far away. Musk hears because of the establishment of a factory in Shanghai, so that Tesla back from the dead, in addition to entering the Chinese market to make the stock price soar, and the Chinese market has made the Tesla market more favorable. In addition to the soaring stock price due to his entry into the Chinese market, which made him the richest man in the world from the brink of bankruptcy, the concessions and tens of billions of dollars in loans from the Chinese government gave him more resources to create a climax in the market. However, the electric cars of other traditional international automobile enterprises cannot be sold in China because of the high safety specifications, high costs, high tariffs and high prices that are not comparable to those of China's domestic electric cars, and there are not as many concessions offered by China as there are in the case of Tesla. The Chinese Communist Party invested in one Tesla, nurtured several Chinese domestic EV brands, and drag down many traditional international automobile companies. This is the victory of the totalitarian government and the sorrow of international automobile companies. Tesla is no longer needed in China, although Tesla is still more advanced than China's domestic electric vehicles, but the gap is not as big as before, the heating up of the US-China trade war will accelerate China's disengagement from Tesla and Tesla will be facing a real crash. And Xi Jinping's third term of office is facing the collapse of China's economy as well as the failure of the war wolves diplomacy and the generation one all the way, which will be more sensitive to the foreign companies in China. The recent disappearance of Foreign Minister Qin Gang and Defense Minister Li Shangfu proves that even if you become a high-ranking official in a totalitarian government, you will not be far away from the prison. And Musk's despicable remarks in recent years will not pull him far away from China's prisons, so I am looking forward to seeing him enjoy the same treatment as a high-ranking official of the Communist Party of China as soon as possible. I also hope that Musk will think about how he would like to be described as a despicable person on his tombstone after he passes away. You are also welcome to leave your comments on which sentence you would like Musk to choose as his epitaph. Thank you for watching our channel and subscribing to our videos to give us more support. Thank you. Sarcasm is the best weapon against the personality cult of totalitarian dictators. Thank you very much for watching our CCP channel. I hope you can subscribe, like, and bookmark our channel. Support us to make more interesting videos to mock the totalitarian government that oppresses the people. See you soon. Ciao.